Hey, this is JoJo, and you're watching Celeb Buzz. Now you have su you have such dedicated fans. Like, can you maybe explain like how your relationship has developed with your fans over the years? Because they are just diehard. I know. I feel really, really lucky. I don't know why I'm so fortunate to have such. Um, you know, patient and understanding and wonderful, loyal supporters, but Twitter has played a great uh, role in developing that relationship and kind of maybe making them feel like they can relate to me mm -hmm. and things like that. So it's been wonderful. I love to interact with them. I love to hear their stories. I love to meet people and converse with them. And um, it's you just... spend a lot of time talking to them on Twitter and yeah. meeting people back and forth. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's a joy. It's a really interesting time that we're in right now where we can connect with people all around the world, all different walks of life, and um, I love to, you know, reach out to new people as well as interact with my supporters. So. Now, you also have a new album, Jumping Trains, yeah. that you have uh, uh, one single out now. Are you planning on dropping another single before the album comes yeah, out? Yeah, that's the plan, is to put out another single before the album drops, but... Do you know what it'll be? I'm really focused on disaster right now. Yeah. It's just starting to get its legs and uh, gain momentum, and uh, we just got some really exciting ads today on radio, so I'm just focused on promoting that mm -hmm. and, and you know, seeing that continue to, to climb. Is that your favorite song on the album? The, no, it's not no. my favorite because I don't have a favorite. I mean, I... I haven't stopped recording, so the album is kind of taken on a different shape every month. Oh wow! So yeah, it's still I have, evolving. I've evolving. Yeah, it's still evolving. I've never stopped. So I love Disaster. Love to perform it, but I don't love it more than the other things that are very close to me as well. Do you know like when there's an official release date? For I'm album? keeping that under wraps until it until it's until it's the right <laughs> thing to say until it's totally official. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna be the spring. Now, as you obviously have matured, your sound has matured, your look has matured, you busted out some pretty sexy outfits. How do you, um, you know, decide, like, this is my new image, or did that come naturally to you? Or? It came naturally. I mean, sometimes I just have to be like, um, excuse me, I'm 21, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not 13. <laughs> right. 21 years old, and sometimes I... She's all grown up now. But sometimes I forget that. I'll look in the mirror, and I'll be like, is that appropriate? And I'll be like, Joe, you're an adult. <laughs> Stop questioning yourself. Right. You know what I mean? I, I have to do what's comfortable for me, what's true to me. If I feel a certain type of way, I might, you know, show some leg. I might show some breast. I might, you know, not want anything inappropriate. <laughs> but it's it's not about being vulgar or explicit. It's just about representing myself and how I feel in the moment. I'm, yeah. I'm a woman. I'm a, a young lady. So it's my pr prerogative to change my mind and flip my style every once in a while. It's fun. Now, uh, another, like, uh, big thing right now is Hunger Games. What, uh, are you excited to see the movie? Have you I'm excited to see the movie. I think um, Josh, Josh Hutch Hutcherson is in it, right? Yes. We did RV together, which I was um, a movie with Robin Williams, and he played my little brother. So I'm so proud of him for, I mean, this is like going to be the biggest movie this year. So yeah. I'm super, super thrilled for him. And I haven't read the books, but a lot of my friends have, and they're you know, talking about it nonstop and how yeah. they're going to go see it as soon as it comes out at midnight. So I'm sure I'll be with them. But I do want to read... I want to read the book before I see the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about It Can Wait, which I'm not going to lie. When I first heard It Can Wait, I thought it was some kind of teen pregnancy. Right. Thing. I know it does sound like that. <laughs> it Can Wait. So, so what is It Can Wait, and how did you get involved with it? It Can Wait is a um, campaign that is uh, encouraging people, especially young people, to take the pledge to not text and drive. And mm -hmm. basically, the idea behind, behind It Can Wait is that there is no text that is worth injuring yourself or someone else or losing a life, you yeah. know, in sending. I mean, and it's really true. A, a lot of my generation feels like we're infallible. It's not going to happen to us. We, you know, we, we're responsible or we got this under control, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. But no one is immune. No one is, uh, it, it doesn't discriminate. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a split second um, where, where things can, can happen. It's such a serious thing. I mean, the statistics are staggering. It's really astounding to, to see how many people are affected by this each year. I mean, yeah. I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that are affected. Um, you know, whether it's getting injured, getting into an accident, there's so much. I'm encouraging people to take the pledge not to text and drive, to, you know, focus on the drive, getting from A to B. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, for example, I, I like to say this to girls, if a boy is texting you, you're on your way to go see him or whatever, you guys are about to meet up, it can wait because, yeah. first of all, make these boys wait for you to respond <laughs> to them, okay? They can wait 30 minutes or whatever, really. Listen to JoJo. It can wait. <laughs>